Hey, thanks for joining me here at my home office, Aerospace Pal. I'm Pat Albersman, and today we'll be walking through TDS diodes and how to use it for a DO160 application. Um, at the end of this, you'll learn how to go through a data sheet and apply the 101000 waveform that's in a TDS diode data sheet and apply it to a DO160 application. So your waveform 5, uh, your waveform 4, you know, uh, whatever waveform you have in your requirements. Um, also, I'll be showing you um, some tools and tips that I provide for free at Aerospace Pals website. Uh, you can see that in the links below, uh, so no, no need to take notes. Um, all right, let's get started. The first most important thing to consider, the two most important things, are your peak pulse power. So what is your requirement for peak pulse power? and what can the TVS handle at the specific waveform uh, your requirement is tested at. So your waveform 5A, um, what kind of peak pulse power do you require and what can the TVS handle, which will obviously tell you if um, the TVS will blow up or if it'll survive during that, that lightning pulse. The other thing to consider, um, and your peak pulse power will be specified right here on the front of the data sheet. This one, the SMCJ, uh, can handle 1.5 kilowatts at this 101000 waveform. And we'll talk about how to translate from the 101000 waveform, which every TVS diode specifies, to your waveform 5A or your waveform 4, um, or even waveform 3. The other thing to consider uh, is your working voltage. So what voltage do you want the TVS to break over at? So for example, this one has a working voltage of 28 volts. Um, it starts to break over at 31 to 34 volts at this 1 milliamp current. Um, likewise, all the TBSs have the same kind of order where in one series they'll have a whole bunch of different working voltages that will be specified right here in the part number. Other things to consider are uh, unidirectional versus bidirectional. Um, so if you have a, a power rail, let's say a 28 volt DC power rail, you know it's always going to be positive. So you probably want a unidirectional um, to clamp uh, surges, uh, lightning surges, uh, versus maybe a, a digital line or an AC power input line where the swings are going to be both, both positive and negative. So you, can't, you don't really want to clip the negative end. Um, that's a good example of when you want to use a bidirectional. Um, the third thing to consider is um, clamping voltage. So they start, TDS diodes start to clamp at uh, just above your working voltage, and you can see that minimum uh, clamping voltage. Uh, so a 28 volt TVS diode working voltage will start to clamp, let's say, uh, somewhere around 32 volts. But then if you look on the data sheet, what you'll see is, and I'll just highlight it here, if you put the maximum current that it can handle through it, it starts to clamp right at 32-ish volts, uh, between 31 and 34 here. But then it goes all the way up to 45 volts. So this is called your max clamping voltage. And if you don't stress it all the way, it won't go up to that max clamping voltage. But it's definitely a good thing to consider uh, because you have to know that the downstream, the downstream circuitry can handle that type of voltage elevation. Last thing to consider here is probably uh, your package type. So there's a number of surface mount package types uh, your SMAJ, BJ, CJ, DJ, and even uh, SMLJ are different uh, package types, and I'll link to those below again, um, as well as your KPA series, which is a bigger um, series. It's going to be your leaded packages, like 30 KPA can handle uh, 30 kilowatts at that 10 1000 waveform. So let's take a look at kind of an example. And maybe actually let's look at some tools uh, that I provide for free on Aerospace Pal's website, uh, linked below again. Um, yeah, let's just jump into that. So if you come here to the website, uh, aerospacepal.com, um, and you click on Members Content, it's free to be a member. Um, and then you click on Toolbox here. 
what you'll see is I have a TVS circuit design spreadsheet that you can use to approximate your uh, peak pulse power that you need per your requirements. Um, so that looks a little bit like this. It's an Excel spreadsheet and I'll just pop it up here that you can tweak. So if you want to do waveform 5A um, and your requirement is 750 volts, 750 amps, uh, that gives you a source impedance of one. And let's say in your circuit, here's your equipment under test, you have a source impedance of 10 ohms and you want to protect against SMCJ. Well, I have all the almost all the TVS diodes preloaded here. You can just drop down and drop and drop in a, a different TVS diode and they'll tell you whether your TVS is going to survive or not and what kind of peak pulse power you have. So come come to the website, take a look at that tool. Uh, it's pretty pretty handy, real easy to use. The other thing at the website is this uh, indirect LT splice simulation example and you can use this again I have all the models built into this uh, here we're showing SMAJ 33A um, you can see there's some series impedance here um, and how that works is that if you zoom out you can see I embedded all the models for the, for the different TVS's and I have these custom waveforms so if I just drag this up over here, what you can do is you can edit the SMCJ or SMAJ, BJ. There's the 15 kPa series, the 30 kPa series in here. You just select the diode that you want to use. Um, you adjust the waveform. So if I want to do waveform 3, I type in waveform 3 here, and then I plug in my source impedance of the uh, transient generator. So for waveform 3, there's a uh, requirement that says level 4, I believe, is 1,500 volts, and you have a source impedance of 25 ohms for waveform 3. You can just press run and take a look at what kind of waveforms you get at the TVS diode, as well as your peak pulse power at the TVS diode. So let's just take a look at a uh, waveform 5 example. So I'll do a waveform 5A. Level 4 is 750 volts and has a source impedance of 1 ohm because it's 750 volts, 700 amps. So that gives you a source impedance of 1 ohm. And if I run this with a 10 ohm so series impedance, you can see here's the waveform that I'll see at the pin. And so that includes the series resistance. And then here's the waveform that I see at the TVS. And you can see that most of the power, most of the voltage, I guess, is dropped across this 10 ohm series resistance. Um, I just hold down Alt, and it gives me a little thermal image. And then I'll click twice on the TVS diode. And here I can see that I'm getting just under four kilowatts for peak pulse power. So now that we know we're getting four kilowatts in this particular example, obviously you would use your own um, circuit and your own um, TVS device and series resistance that's in your circuit. But uh, in this example where we're using a 33 working voltage of an SMCJ to um, waveform five, we can see that we're getting four kilowatts. So I'll walk through the data sheet and uh, we'll take a look to see if that complies uh, with the, the data sheet's translation from the 10-1000 waveform to uh, waveform 5A's peak pulse requirements. Okay, here, jumping back to the data sheet, um, here's the one we're selecting. It's a 33 working voltage it uh, starts to clamp at 36 uh, to 40, and it peaks out uh, at its max current at this particular um, at this particular waveform, which is, is the 101000 waveform again. It peaks out at 53.3 volts clamping voltage. So that is what your downstream circuitry needs to be uh, able to withstand. Um, 
in the worst case. So when we take a look at the peak wattage, this has a peak wattage of 1.5 kilowatts. Well, we saw that we have uh, a 4 kilowatt requirement, or that's what the TVS will see. And if we remember, the 1.5 kilowatts is to the 10-1000 waveform, and I'll show that waveform right they always have it specified uh, here's the 10 1000 waveform figure four it shows a rise time of 10 microseconds and a half time of 1000 microseconds or one millisecond now basically what you do is you use this peak pulse power rating graph to translate that one millisecond here you can see at 1.5 kilowatts is a single die TVS diode and you translate that to the duration the half duration of your waveform so for waveform 5a we know that it has a half duration of 120 microseconds so we'll take a look right about here at 120 microseconds and we see that for this particular case we can withstand with this TVS diode two, three, about three and a half kilowatts. So in the example that we're showing here, uh, three and a half kilowatts, that is uh, quite marginal. So this might be able to handle that and it's it's quite marginal, but this uh, seems like we want to move up in, in TPS dialed size. Just another thing that shows that is if we look at the peak voltage that we're getting to, we're getting to about 60 volts here. And if we jump back to the data sheet and we look at a 33 here, we see that it's supposed to clamp at 53.3 and it's being overstressed in this case just slightly and it's going up to 60 volts. Now this voltage here doesn't translate exactly to what we're simulating because what we're simulating is a different waveform. Again, that's the 10-1000 waveform. We're simulating waveform 5A. But it's kind of a good indicator. If you're seeing this go over the, considerably over, you might be overstressing the TBS diode. Then if we do the same thing on the, the spreadsheet calculator, um, this is more of an approximation. Um, it certainly uses mathematical models, but here you can see we entered in waveform 5a we entered our requirement over here and our series impedance everything in blue is what you enter and then configuration is how many tbs diodes are in um, series here and we're selecting we'll select here you can see with a 28a it's green because it has margin 20 percent margin shows green um, here if we select the 33a it goes to yellow because now we're right on the hairy edge. Again, rated power to um, 3.5 kilowatts. And here we're seeing uh, an approximate um, power on the TBS diode of 3.3. So this says it, it might pass, but it's marginal. So it's showing up in, in yellow. Last, let's just jump back to the simulation. I'll just show you how you can uh, if I want to move up in size, I believe the SMDJ 33A can handle a little bit more peak pulse power. Um, you can re-simulate that. Uh, here you can see that, yeah, we're clamping at a lower voltage, so 48 volts. Um, again, the power should be about the same, but if you go to SMDJ um, data sheet, you'll see that the uh, power capabilities, and I'll just do that real quick. Um, if I search SMDJ, here we are at the SMDJ. Um, you can see it has twice the power. Um, so when you translate to the waveform, again here at about 120 uh, microseconds, you go up, that's okay, two, three, four, five, six, seven, seven and a half. Um, and if you look, you could do the same thing in the spreadsheet move to a SMDJ 33 and again seven and a half so now you have significant margin all right thanks for watching aerospace pals 
how to do a simulation and uh, calculation for a TVS dial 2D160. I hope you enjoyed and you can check out all the free stuff, um, simulation examples, uh, spreadsheets, those kind of things at Aerospace Pals website. Uh, thanks for watching.